Good morning, my name is Hans Schut and I'm the author of the Scotch Gambit Modern Attack Beginner's Guide on Chessable. Today I'm going to take you through the 10 most common review mistakes by my students. Um, the background picture is from Bill Bow, 2016, and you see Magnus Carlsen observing my game. I'm the guy with the cap. So every pro user has an overview of their difficult moves or review mistakes. And I selected here the most common review mistakes of the first chapter of my mini course. So this is the main line, chapter one. And you can see on the first line, there are about 10,000 attempts and 2,000 mistakes. I will take you through those 10 most common mistakes. And if I click on a specific line, you can see here that the course move is rook a to e1, and a lot of players played queen c3 followed by bishop takes b6 and rook d1. I will now switch to chess base and take you through the 10 most common mistakes. So this is the start of uh, the uh, Scotch Gambit modern attack. Knight e4, knight takes d4, threatened to take twice on c6. And now uh, black defense with bishop d7, we take, take back. And this is the first position. The course move here is castle short. Like in general, in the opening, you want to bring your king into safety, develop your pieces, and uh, control the center. Some students selected here the move f3. Every pawn move uh, gives up control of squares and gains control of squares. And here the diagonal h4 to e1 has been weakened. f2 is the weakest point in the opening to begin with. And black can play queen h4. And after g3, take advantage of the pin um, of the pawn of h2 winning the game. So let's come back. F2, always a weak point in the opening, and we see that even after knight d2, black can sacrifice their knight, and again, um, there is this double attack queen h4. The king goes to e3 to defend the knight on d4, but black now chases the knight with c5, the knight goes away. King is in check again and look at the unsafe king. The queen will go to g4 and then uh, black will continue to hunt the white king with bishop f5 or with bishop b5. And we want to be on the other side and not be on the defending side. Finally, after bishop e3, the knight can get chased. Bishop gets chased, bishop b5, and we don't get to castle. So after b takes c6, we castle, bring our king into safety, and don't weaken the diagonal h4 to e1. Bishop c5, and now we continue with f3. This is the second position. So in our course, the move that we want to play is bishop e3, and after that, f4. Um, so a lot of players continue here with f4. So let's see what the difference is. But now black has the option queen b8. And this is, this is not like um, a winning move for black, but it's inconvenient for white. And black scores 60% here, despite the fact that the position is equal. The pawn is under attack. Uh, some white players play b3, but now if we just continue with our own line, we can see that by playing b3, the square c3 has been weakened. 
and black easily achieves equality and we don't get our, to the setup that we're looking for. Also we see after queen b8, if we continue with knight d2 and just ignore the threat of b2, black takes, knight takes e4, d takes e4, queen d2, and this is about equal, um, but it's not the kind of position we're looking for. Black has a bishop pair, and um, it's very un unbalanced in terms of uh, pawn structure. So we play bishop e3 because now, if black would continue to play queen b8, we play knight d2, and knight b to b3, and uh, the, now the knight on g5 is hanging, the bishop on c5 is hanging, and white is better. If we play in the old line, the knight goes to e4, and the threat of the bishop on e3 attacking the knight of g5 is gone. So that's why we choose the move order bishop e3 to avoid the complications with queen b8. Continue in the line. Here we are. And now we get the move f6. The pawn on e5 is under attack. Um, and I know what to play here because I know the final position I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for the position where I have control over c5 with a knight. And this is from a game from Schmerden. And Fishbein, who wrote a book about this line, states, this is the dream position for white in this variation. Black's queen side is totally blocked. He has lost the battle for the dark squares, especially c5, and his bishop has no useful diagonals. The knight cannot be displaced from c5. It dominates the queen side and looks into the center also. I would say that white effectively has two extra pawns here, one in the center and one on the queen side too, because the black pawns will fall like ripe apples. So check out the model game. But this is the tabia that I have in my head with this dark square, dark square bind by white. If there's a knight on c5 um, that dominates the position. So when we go back, to this and black plays f6. Um, I'm going to fight for this square immediately by playing knight b3. If I would play e takes f6, then I activate the queen and black gets an equal position. If I play e6, attacking the bishop, black plays bishop takes d4, has an intermediate check on e3, and we lost a pawn. So for me, the help is that I know the final position I want to reach and which moves fit into that. So knight b3 to fight for the square c5 immediately. Okay, let's go to the next line. So knight b3 and now queen e7. And this was the variation that is uh, most often played incorrectly. So in the course we play rook a to e1 with an x-ray attack on the queen on e7. And why is this relevant? If you play queen c3, which looks very thematic to get more control over c5, uh, black can play f6, and notice that after bishop c5, we don't actually threaten to take the queen on e7, because the bishop on c5 is still pinned. So black can just exchange everything, and reach a kind of equal position. And of course, we don't want to exchange here, because then we have given up the control over c5. And after rook d1, it's not really to the point, because black again plays f6 and frees themselves. 
So rook a to e1, and now we see if a black would here play f6, we push the pawn, the bishop takes, we attack the bishop again, and now we have to discover the attack because we have set up this x-ray attack. So the idea of rook a to e1 is to prevent black from playing the freeing move f6. Let's go to the next line. So here we go, knight e4, knight d2, and now f5. We take, black takes back. Notice that after d takes e4, we have discovered attack on the bishop on c5, and if the bishop takes on e3, we take back with the knight of f5. So black is forced to take with the f pawn, and now we're going to put pressure on the c-file by playing c4, rook c1, and followed by um, knight b3 or another move, depending on how a black reacts. So in this position, c4 scores 81%. Queen d2 is not a bad move, but scores 57%, and that's why I chose uh, the the move c4 because it scores better um, and after c4 black continues queen e7 and we play rook c1 so we maintain the tension so alternatively what has been played is c takes d5 this releases some of the tension so reduces the possibilities of um, of, of white in this position so I propose to play rook c1, and then after b6, we take queen e6, and now we threaten to take on d5, and after b6, f5, we are winning. Um, and so this is uh, a, a, a very important idea. So don't release the tension too early but keep the tension, and then we can choose when to uh, release it. And of course, what is the idea? Let's just um, look at what we're trying to do. If So we have an x-ray attack on the bishop on c5. If black would just play something random, attack the pawn on b2, we protect it with the rook to f2, which also um, uh, make sure that uh, black can no longer take on e3 with check. Now we have this discovered attack, and now this pin on the queen on e7 and uh, the, the rook on f8 wins the game. Let's go to the next variation. b takes e6, and now an early c5. Knight b3, the pawn on d5 is under attack by the queen, so black defends the pawn with c6, f3, knight g5, and now the question is how do we continue? So a lot of students play f4 here, but you can see that black has the option to play c4, and this is not so clear. White has two weak pawns on g5 and e5, and uh, a double pawn on b3 and b2. And we don't want to allow this option of c4. So instead of allowing black to play it, we play it ourselves. And then after d4, we continue and we get a crushing attack. This is uh, plus five for white. Okay, let's go to the next difficult moves. Now we have bishop e7, f3, kicking the knight, knight c5. So if the knight would go to g5, um, then we get an f4 move for free. So after f4, now there are two moves, castle and knight e4, and a lot of students have difficulty 
figuring out when do I play knight c3, when do I play knight b3, what's going on here. So to explain this, so after castle, uh, the bishop on e7 cannot go to c5. And also, also there's no subsequent queen e7 or rook e8 to attack the pawn on e5. So after castle, we play f5, no bishop c5, and after knight e4, we play knight b3 to prevent bishop c5. But our pawn on e5 is not under attack, and this is, uh, this is what we aim for. So after castle, we play f5, because the bishop cannot go to c5. After knight e4, if we would play f5, there's bishop c5, now knight c3, queen e7, and suddenly the pawn on e5 is weak. So this is what we want to avoid. So after knight e4, we play knight c3 with the idea of knight takes c3, b takes c3, and now the pawns on c2 and c3 are uh, hindering the advance of uh, uh, the black pawns c5 and d4, which is the standard plan, plan for black. So, knight e4, knight c3, because we don't cannot play f5 because of bishop c5, and after castle we play f5, and after knight e4 we play the prophylactic move bishop against bishop c5, the move knight b3. So bishop c5 is coming. Notice that if we would play here knight c3, then after bishop c5, knight takes c4, again, black attacks the pawn on e5, and we have difficulty defending it. Um, and that's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid bishop c5 um, a rook e8 or queen e7 setup. Okay, bishop e5, knight d7. So this is uh, the line where the knight doesn't go to e4 but to d7. We castle. Black cannot take on e5 because the, one of the knights is pinned, so we can just take the knight and the other knight cannot take back. Bishop c5 is um, a questionable move because black needs this bishop on e7 to defend the queen. And after take, take, we are going to chase the queen with bishop g5. So some players play in this line, knight takes d4, but black can now just take. And after knight c3, rook e8, f4, f6, break up the center and is perfectly fine. So bishop g5, um, you can perhaps remember by thinking about how great it would be to get to this line where we trap the queen on move 11. So the queen on d8 is under attack by the knight. On c6, the knight cannot go to e7 because the, 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 the knight is covering. The queen cannot go to e7 because the knight is covering that square and cannot go to f6 because of the pawn on e5. So. I've had this a few times in online games, um, that I trapped the queen on move 11 and won the game. Of course, black can go back, but then we take, and if black does not want to allow uh, the queen to be trapped and that defends the pawn, we take and then we break in the center and after knight e5, we have queen h5 with a double attack on the knight on e5 and the king on e8, and we win back the knight um, while the black king can no longer castle. Okay, thank you very much for listening to the video. Let me know if you're interested to learn about this for the other chapters, whether it's useful. And then um, 
leave me some comments. Uh, I will uh, make an announcement of this video and let me know if it's uh, useful for you to, uh, to recall the lines. Thank you again and I hope to see you with the next video. Have a nice day.